In this programme, we'll look at techniques for diagnosing and injecting steroids and local anaesthetics into the ankle and foot joints. The rheumatologist, and indeed the GP, need to be able to examine the ankle, the subtalar and mid-tarsal joints, together with the small joints in the front of the foot, in particularly the metatarsophalangeal joints. The ankle joint is a mortise and tenon joint and acts as a hinge with a large tendon, the Achilles tendon, controlling extension through the muscles of the calf, whilst a complex of tendons and muscles work in front to flex the front of the foot. The ankle joint sits on and above the subtalar joint, which allows the ankle to rock a little from side to side, a movement necessary to allow walking on uneven ground or on a slope. The mid-tarsal joints are a complex of small joints that form the arch of the foot, as seen in this diagram, are difficult to isolate and identify on examination, but are often the site of pain and inflammation in osteoarthritis and after injury. Passive examination can be used to determine if any of these three main joint areas that comprise the ankle and hind foot are the cause of pain or are restricted in movement. Let's take a look at how to examine the ankle. I'm going to show you how to examine the ankle um, as comprehensively as you need to really to identify where the pathology is going to be. So first of all, you take a look around the ankle to see if there's any obvious synovitis and have a feel to see whether or not all the landmarks, especially the bony prominences of the medial and lateral malleoli. And uh, in his case, there isn't any visible swelling. You also just feel down the Achilles. Now I'm going to isolate the, the three joints of the ankle. So the first of the joints, holding onto the lower leg and moving the front of the foot, is the mortis and tenon joint, the ankle joint itself, which moves in flexion and extension, um, or plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. And that moves very nicely. Then going to move on to the subtalar joint, so grasping the lower leg and taking the heel you then want to move sideways and make sure there's um, enough movement in the subtalar joint. There's some movement there, but a little bit of age-related um, stiffness across the um, subtalar joint. And then finally, the mid-tarsal joint, so grasping the ankle and the forefoot. Um, you can move that mid-tarsal joint, and this complex series of joints will tell you whether it's moving. And the mid-tarsal joint actually moves better than the subtalar joint. Sometimes you find quite extensive osteoarthritis across the, uh, the mid-talar joints, and it's not possible from the outside to isolate the different mid-tarsal uh, mid mid, mid joints. So, there we go. And then what you've then got is the joints, the MTP joints of the forefoot with the squeeze test, and then individual examination of the five joints, including the great toe. Uh, and that's the examination of the foot and ankle. The ankle joint may be swollen if there is synovitis, either acutely with an inflammatory arthritis of any sort, or more chronically. There are a number of causes of ankle synovitis, as seen on this slide. It's always important to distinguish synovial swelling of the ankle itself from an edema of the lower limb caused by fluid retention and right ventricular failure. With synovitis of the ankle, there is little or no pitting and swelling is usually as bad in the morning as it is in the evening. Sometimes, however, both joint synovitis and ankle edema coexist. Subtalar and mid-tarsal joint steroid injection can be useful in settling foot inflammation and relieving the symptoms of pain and stiffness. Hind foot and midfoot injections, other than those into the ankle, are normally performed with radiological imaging using either X-rays or ultrasound, as the subtalar and mid-tarsal joints are hard to identify through the skin by palpation. However, injection of the ankle joint itself is usually performed in an outpatient clinic setting. With the patient lying on a couch, the ankle is approached anteriorly and the injection site is marked. This can be just ab above the medial side of the joint, just above the talus, anterior to the medial malleolus and just medial to the tibialis anterior. Alternatively, you can inject laterally as shown here, just medial to the lateral malleolus and over the joint line. 
I favour the lateral approach and always infiltrate local anaesthetic down to the joint capsule as I find patients prefer more than just ethyl chloride spray when they're having their ankle joint injected. I'll now show you how to do this on our patient. Injection of the ankle. There are a number of sites that uh, you can get into the ankle joint all the way from the medial malleolus right the way across to the lateral malleolus and I in fact tend to prefer the lateral approach partly because it's easier to get at and partly because I'm used to it and um, don't find it too difficult to get into the ankle. So first of all identify with your examining finger or thumb where the actual ankle joint is and also where the medium malleolus is. So the way I do it is to draw around the area of the medial malleolus and then down onto the natural joint line which is around there and that's going to be the area here where I'm going to put the injection. I'm going to go down almost towards the bottom of the of the medial malleolus from the lateral malleolus. Some people use uh, a lignocaine infiltration first with an orange or blue needle. Um, it all depends really on the, the, the nature of the patient. On, on this occasion I'm going to use ethyl chloride spray and, uh, and a blue needle. So using some Unicept, I'll clean all the way across the area of the ankle and you can see that the markers don't change and you can see where you don't want to touch it again you can see where you've originally marked and then using quite a liberal dose of uh, ethyl chloride and also avoiding any obvious superficial veins over the foot especially if people have uh, mild varicosities because otherwise you get a nasty bruise and using on this occasion depamedrone 80 milligrams plus uh, two mils of 2% uh, lignocaine to give it a little bit of volume. I'm going to then, having warned the patient I'm about to start, just infiltrate down, down towards, and you feel it go quite easily, and then down and actually into the ankle joint. Now I can feel it firmly into the ankle joint, and I'm now ready to start um, injecting uh, into the ankle. I'm just finishing um, infiltrating the ankle and last few um, drops of fluid and then pushing over the site I'll just remove the needle and syringe and because it's a fairly delicate um, piece of skin over the ankle push quite firmly across that uh, again for a minute or two just to avoid any unnecessary bruising before putting a plaster on and finishing. The Achilles tendon is commonly the site of inflammation in conditions that involve enthesitis. The enthesis is the joint between a tendon and a bone, and inflammation of the enthesis is known as enthesitis. All seronegative spondyloarthritides, especially psoriatic arthritis, frequently cause Achilles tendonitis and enthesitis. And injections usually helpful in treating inflammation of the Achilles bursa. Injection of an inflamed Insertion of the Achilles at the tendon insertion at the heel is both painful and less successful and I rarely try it. Injection to the tendon sheath however can be both effective, relatively painless and speed up the time to recovery without any undue risk of tendon damage. The inflamed Achilles bursa can be low down and close to the insertion of the tendon at the heel or may appear as an inflamed swelling higher up the tendon. Injection at either bursa site is worthwhile. We'll now look at one final site of injection at the hind foot for the treatment of plantar fasciitis or policeman's heel. Injection is into the heel itself where the plantar fascia of the foot arch inserts into the calcaneum bone underneath the heel. Injection at this site is relatively easy although it can be painful both during and after injection and the patient should be warned about pain before the injection. It's one of the few injections where a degree of pain suggests you've put your injection into the correct place. Let's have a look at how to do it now. Now I'm going to show you the technique for injecting the, the plantar fascia or plantar fasciitis. Uh, the plantar fascia comes down the inside arch of the foot and then inserts right the way across the back of the heel. And the patient will have complained of a nasty tearing sensation when they first get up in the morning and put their heel to the floor but also an almost constant and sometimes extremely 
uh, disruptive pain to the heel. And uh, just crouching down, it's important before injecting to find out where the actual main site of tenderness is. So what you have to do is sometimes even using a knuckle, but using your thumb or finger, press into there until by looking at uh, the patient's face and also um, hearing them report on it. Is that the most painful part just there? Um, we'll then put a marker across the bottom of the foot. Now I've already warned uh, the patient that um, this is going to be an uncomfortable injection and uh, it's one of the few injections that uh, is ge genuinely uncomfortable and has to be because the needle goes right down onto the periosteum of the, of the, uh, of the heel and the patient feels like they want to move the foot away but uh, this patient's been very well briefed so using some UNICEF to clean up the whole area and get a nice um, non-touch um, clean area I'm then going to use the ethyl chloride spray and give it give the heel a really good spray on this occasion for five or ten seconds which um, he doesn't feel like he'll appreciate but I'm sure he will um, when I come to doing the injection and using a blue needle and uh, a syringe with um, hydrocortisone acetate 50 milligrams and uh, two or three mils of um, local anesthetic I'm going to infiltrate right down onto the deep down onto the periosteum right there so I'm almost pushing with the needle now and starting to infiltrate across the areas and I'm just coming now to the end of that injection and um, the whole of that heel um, periosteum is infiltrated with local anesthetic and steroid and I'll bring the needle out and then push hard on the heel again to try and avoid uh, any unnecessary bruising and then um, after a minute or two of doing that um, um, and telling the patient they can start breathing again um, I then put a plaster on the heel and the sock back on. I'm now going to show you how to inject the um, Achilles bursa or the uh, peritendinous region of the Achilles. Uh, the Achilles inserts down at the heel and runs up and into the calf and quite often in an Achilles bursitis you can actually feel a area of swelling which allows you to uh, mark the area to inject. In this case it's a, it's a tenderness which we've uh, decided is actually most prominent there. Now usually there's a side that you decide to inject from whether laterally or medially and in this instance we're going to go laterally. So we mark just behind the body of the Achilles tendon in order to uh, not go into or near the Achilles tendon and it's going to infiltrate around the back of the area. There's no evidence that injection around the Achilles tendon uh, has any degenerative effect on the tendon and in fact it seems that uh, tendon rupture is more predisposed by systemic steroids than it is by injectables. So what we do is clean the area around the mark and then using um, either a mill of hydrocortisone acetate, 25 milligrams, and a mill of lignocaine or slightly higher volumes. Use the ethyl chloride to get the area a little bit cold and a little bit numb. And then fairly straightforwardly just introduce the needle behind the tendon and into the peritendinous tissue. And then you can start to infiltrate in and around the area and as you finish your infiltration, then quickly take the needle out and press over the area to avoid any unnecessary bruising and then uh, leave the patient with a plaster and get the socks and shoes back on. The joints at the front of the foot are frequently involved in inflammatory arthritis, either with osteoarthritis or more commonly rheumatoid arthritis. The metatarsophalangeal joints or MTP joints are the first point of strike for most people when they walk and when inflamed, people describe it as feeling like they're walking on pebbles. There are five MTP joints, and the largest, the first MTP joint, tends to be affected in OA and crystal arthritis, whereas the other four are affected by both OA and rheumatoid. It's useful to know how to inject MTP joints, and it's relatively easy without imaging control if you're careful to identify and mark the joint line first. 
I find it's almost always further proximally than you think. I always use local anaesthetic injected with an orange gauge needle as I infiltrate the tissue over the joint and gently work the needle into the joint space from the dorsal side of the foot. I'm now going to show you how to inject an MTP joint, in this instance the MTP joint of the third toe. Um, here's the third toe and the MTP joint is just down there somewhere, always slightly further uh, proximal than you think. So you can get a feel for the joint by wiggling the toe and that gives you the joint margin just at the end of my finger and I'll mark just alongside the tendon, the extensor tendon. So I'm going to inject along the side of it so I don't go through the tendon and make it uncomfortable or damage the tendon. I'm going to clean up with some um, unicept or saline around the area so that the foot's nice and clean and that then becomes no touch. And I'm then going to spray with ethyl chloride and the way that the injection's done is we use hydrocortisone acetate because this is a small joint and don't want a depot preparation which may cause uh, tissue difficulty around the joint. And I'm going to mix a little bit of the hydrocortisone, uh, 25 milligrams of hydrocortisone acetate with one mil of uh, 2% lignocaine. But first of all, I'm going to use an orange needle and lignocaine to infiltrate down to the joint line and then change the needle, change the syringe on the needle. So now alongside over the joint line and alongside the tendon sheath, I'm going to start to infiltrate around that area now with local anaesthetic so that if it is a difficult injection it won't be painful and I'm now coming down to the joint line and I can just feel feel it go into the joint there so that's a nice easy injection um, it's into the joint and I haven't used very much local anaesthetic so I'll change the syringe there so we've got the syringe with the hydrocortisone in and now that I'm still in the joint I can then start to get a free flow of the fluid through and I'll infiltrate in until we've almost completely emptied the syringe and there we are all finished I'll remove the and then press over the toe and uh, the injection's finished, the plaster and it'll be completed. If you can practice enough to feel confident these injections in the ankle, the hind foot and the forefoot, you'll be able to help a lot of people who present with inflammatory foot pain. As usual with joint and soft tissue pain, confidence comes with initial practice and subsequently through seeing enough people who need injections so that your diagnostic and injection technique develops and can be maintained at a high level.